Hey guys, this is going to be part two of my water guide, and this time I'll be playing Hero, aka Horden of Sawney, aka Houdanais, and it's going to be against Donati's Port on Malaysia, which is this map with two ponds either side. Um, so let's just get right into it. Uh, let me just play fast, I guess, because play very fast is choppy. So to begin with, I'm going to start with the B Fisher build. I don't want to put my Trevoid right under my TC because I've already got line of sight here. I want to put it like mid to right of the pond, basically. The goal is to stop ports from getting both sides of the sea. You don't want him to... Um, Basically, the port dream and his wind condition is getting both sides of the sea and him fishing on both sides with like 10 to 15, like 15 to 20 boats. And I'm just trying to prevent him to, from getting onto my side as much as possible. Uh, with the age up line of sight, I'll have this covered. Um, and you'll see what I do at the age 2 to get full line of sight of the sea and to try and secure it. So, with the B Fisher build. You want to go for three boats in transition, but I've already got a 40 wood and I've got a couple of the yaks, so I plan to go four boats instead of three, which would result from an 18 village up to a 19 village up. And yeah, it's just like squeezing that every advantage you can get, having that one extra vill and aging at the same time, you always want to do that. So I've got three boats now and I've got one more in queue. I pull all vills off wood and now I'm on onto food and it may look like I haven't got much food um, but I've got a lot of vills gathering food and I can eat these two yaks so I'm going to age up 19 vill idolless. So what I'm going to do in early colonial, I'm going to age up fast, uh, the moment I hit up I'm going to train two canoes. I'm going to put one canoe on this side of the pond and I'm going to put one canoe on this side of the pond. So I've got four line of sight of the pond. The age up will get this line of sight. And I'd be able to snipe any vill that tries to build a dock with the canoe. Now, uh, with the age up Travoy, I'm going to send it up north. I'm going to put a war hut on this like sort of area. Uh, it's a very good area to put it here. If you put it here, then you don't have much control of the sea at all. He's just going to take this area. So you want to put it here so you can sort of secure this and secure this and here. Now, you can see in transition, I'm just gathering four vill. And I'm stacking wood. So I train the vill. Um, send the war heart up to here. Right on his coast. And I train a canoe. And I build a house with the wood. And then I'm going to train another canoe the moment I get another 100 wood. Um, I'm sending, I'm going to put it slowly a bit. So I train another canoe, I'm going to send it here. You can see I've spread out my boat, boats by the way. So I've got one here, boat one here. Canoe over here. So I've got all the places potentially for a wheel covered. So I send four Kanye horsemen first. Why? So it's 4.15 into the game. I want to cut off any vill trying to build a dog. I know I've got the canoe here, or I will do once I've retasked it. Um, I want to cut off any vill here. And as it's so early on in the game, it's, it's highly likely he hasn't got his walls up already, especially as he scouted my dog as well. Now, he won't expect a four Kanye Horseman shipment at 415 if he thinks I've gone B Fisher. As he's no, he know he he walked part his hero past here with the H1 dock, so he knows I've gone B Fisher. So I've gone. If I go to his point of view, he's definitely scouted it. Now, and he scouted my war heart as well. But we'll come to that. Um, so he won't expect this early H4 uh, H. Uh, sorry, he won't expect this early for Kanye West shipment. And the purpose of these, they have actually they actually have a big purpose in this sort of build. Now. You can catch the one vill, but I have got the canoe here, so that's not really a big deal. You could catch him slacking with the walls. So at this point in the game, he won't have the walls up or he'll be building them now. So I'd send them straight towards his base. I've got the one canoe to deal with the, the vill that comes, if it does. And 
Um, these are just going to go idle him and try and kill Vils, that sort of thing, whilst I'm just going to be doing whatever I want. And it also means that he can't just randomly do like an FB or something. I mean, that's very unlikely, but it's like... I'm, I'm, I'm going to put him on the back foot, basically, with this shipment. And, well, they have a purpose later as well. Basically, you want to raid with them until you have two left. You just want to idle, basically like suicide them for idle time, which is worth it. And then once you have like two left, you want to put one here and one here. Um, in case he sends more than one vill and this canoe isn't enough to take out that vill. Um, but I, that's the one mistake I did. Well, not the one. It's my first mistake. I end up just suiciding. Well, not suiciding. I just end up leaving these to die to TC fire just by idling. Uh, I do get two reveals, I believe. I get this one for sure. Um, so I block it. Do your best to block it from going into the TC. So I get that one. Uh, in the meantime, so, okay. What have I spent my res on? Uh, first of all, I build a canoe. Build a house. Then I trade another canoe. Put it here, put it here. And then I just stacked wood. Once I had 100 wood, I then started sending a veil over to this side, so when I got 200 wood, I could stand down a dock immediately, because um, I am quite scared that he will 2 or 3 cow veil rush this, uh, push this uh, warhawk, and then he can just nuke this completely. However, um, if I've got garrison canoes in here, like, they train quite quickly, um, and even each canoe does 15 anti-ship damage, so if I've got four canoes in there, I'd have 60 anti-ship damage with this, 100, so it's 160 versus any caravel, I'm going to hold on to this position, if I just trade four canoes. And that's if he ships caravels already, and if he's shipping caravels first, and I'm, I'm idling him with Kanyas, he literally won't have any wood to train a third caravel. As you can see, he only has res for a third caravel because he ships 700 wood, but if he did two caravels first, he wouldn't be able to train that third caravel, and this Warheart plus some canoes in the dock um, would be able to hold two caravels. Um, and I think he follows up with two caravels next, um, which is already a huge deal for me, I think. I think it's two cowbells next, unless he goes rendering then two cowbells. Let me just play fast a bit. Um, come on, send your shipment. So it's three dock booming right now. Okay, there's the two cowbells. You gotta remember these four Kanye Wests. I've been idling his entire land eco for the past minute or so, which is just huge value. You could argue he could have his walls up by now, but I mean, it's like four minutes in, if he, and if he's walling so early, it's very unlikely he's going to have more than one or two docks. And if if you're worried about a two caravel rush, then if he two caravel rushes you and uh, tries to wall, he's not going to be able to have a third caravel, so you can hold that. So that's the whole point of these four Kanyas, is to keep this war heart alive. And it's to keep his economy belled. So he's got 16 idle wheels right now. My, right, meanwhile, my 24 wheels are just gathering without being touched, basically. Um, I'm just going to play it. Um, I'm just going to seize the dock with the war chief. But now, as the 600 wood's coming in, I'm putting him by the TPs. I'm training a couple of tomahawks because I've just got spare food. Probably only going to get one out, but it's whatever. And in the meantime, I'm slowly adding in boats here and there. So I've got six, I've got five now, I've got six now. Um, and I've got another one in queue. And I trained one canoe to start harassing his eco out of range of docks and TCs. Um, just to stop them gathering if I can potentially kill them. Just for 100 wood, which I think is fine. And I'm just going to pull back if he gets close to the dock. Or we'll just retask it to another boat. So these two canyons should now go back to here so it doesn't sneak a veil, but I end up losing them, so that's my big mistake. And then I see this. This is my this is my fog of war, so I see one caravel and then I see a second from firing. 
so I know he's shipped two. So what does this mean? I instantly queue two docks, uh, sorry, two canoes in my dock. I put the rally point in the dock. So they're just going to be garrisoned, and I'm going to start sieging his dock as well. And in the meantime, with the 600 wood, I've built a TP, laid down the foundation for the second one, and I've got the resources for stagecoach the moment this TP is built. Um, although I queued another build, so I might delay it a bit. And I'm queuing another canoe so I don't lose this position, which I won't do. And now I'm queuing stagecoach, uh, queuing more canoes, having constant vills, and I'm just going to throw in a fishing boat here and there just to make sure my eco is in check. Um, so I send, so the build is four kind of horsemen, 600 wood for stagecoach, and um, some canoes. Now it's 800 resources. And that will be into private, followed up by privateers. Um, but the 800 resources is going to be partly to train tomahawks, tomahawk big button, and the 200 coin for um, uh, for coin towards the 500 coin to privateers, and then the wood for like a second dock probably on my side, and some more fishing boats and some more canoes. Um, so you can see me training more canoes. I know. One of his caravels is low HP. He's only got one caravel um, that can threaten this canoe sort of mass, this small mass I've got. So he's got one repairing. He's got this one at 203 HP. So I know he can't broadside with that one without getting picked off. And so the worst case scenario is that he broad broadsides with one caravel, which I don't think one shots a canoe. Um, yeah, it doesn't quite. So I'm just gonna pull back when that happens. So I don't lose any canoes and just garrison for the time being whilst I'm sieging. But he's just going to pick it off with his hero, which is smart by him. Good use of his, any units he can. Um, so here's the 800 res crates. I've got the Tomahawk Big Bustle on the way, and I've put Stagecoach on coin. And that's going to, and I've put four boats on whales as well. And that's to make sure I can get this Buccaneers without adding the uh, marketplaces and stuff like that. I don't want to spend any useless wood. Um, it's all about these small efficiencies, basically, and 200 coin from the uh, crate should be enough for the Buccaneers on time. Um, in the meantime, just booming on my side, oh, and I'm sieging his dock on his side with 90 anti-ship damage plus 100 anti-ship damage. So it's 190 damage doing to this caravel. He broadsides on my Thomas, so I should really pull them back. You can see the damage just being done already. Like down to 510 HP and I did lose some HP on my Thomas but they didn't die so it's not the worst thing in the world but it could be better okay so now I've got privateers on the way with these crates I'm gonna add in the second dock my side to get that more secure I'm gonna put it here and I'm gonna boom with it as well so if he was was to like potentially ship two caravels even though I know he shipped them on this side um, if he was like to ship a frigate in Fortress, for example, I'd be more secure and just garrison in two docks rather than just one. And I think that's and it's easier to boom with two, obviously. So I've just got two boats coming in. Um, I've got Tomahawks coming out, so I did the big button, I trained five. And now I just do this little micro battle. He comes forward, I move back, let my unit, my building shoot. And then when he goes back, I go back into Siege. And you just keep doing this. Uh, in the meantime, training rails and training canoes out of this dock to get this anti-ship as high as possible. Um, in the meantime, I'm just slowly trying to get resources to age. I'm just throw up this marketplace now. Put more rails onto coin. Or more boats onto coin. And I'm just going to keep poking in and out. I'm just trying to get this dock. I set my water waypoint this side, so I've got my privateers coming. I'm trying to bait in this caravel, but... I, I shouldn't have moved back, I should have just kept sieging. And now I just put my canoes out and I'm just going to do a little push. Um, the one issue with privateers is that they only have 5.5 speed. Uh, I'm going to turn my game sound down a little bit. Seems like it might be a bit too loud. Okay, that should be better. Um, so they've only got 5.5 speed, caravels and canoes have 8.5, 
and what this means is that you've got to pull back privateers much earlier than you normally would a caravel and yeah, as you can see he's pulled back at 175 HP um, with a privateer you probably have to pull back at like 300 HP or even earlier because broadsides do a lot of damage and well you have 5.5 speed to get away which is not very fast and you're going to get stuck on canoes and stuff so you don't want to worry about pathing so you want to pull it back fairly early uh, in the meantime just seizing this dock whilst I still can this whole push is just to stop him killing my tomahawks basically and to like kill some of his fishing boats and caravels um, so I do end up killing that caravel. I think he pulled back that actually too late. Um, and then he does a really nice job here. So he pulls back at 500 HP in the baits in my f boats and he ends up getting a free privateer because of that because I didn't retask or pull back. So that was a nice micro by him. He got a free privateer. Um, a little bit of a slip up from me. I lose a couple of canoes as well but they're not the biggest deal here. Now I'm slowly gathering for my age up. I've got TPs on wood so I can chuck in the random fishing boat and the random canoe. I've got a second dock coming down. I should add a second war hut as well. And then try and age. So I've got 10 tomahawks and my hero. Oh, regarding the hero by the way, he also buffs um, naval units HP by 10% as well as land units. So having him by the coast is also really good um, for those who didn't know. Um, so my next shipment will be improved warships. You gotta remember I fast age to age two, so I'm gonna be aging to age three for a long time, much longer than normal. Um, so I'm just gonna ship something in transition. This shipment is 25% combat on your boats, which is like equivalent to like an age three or an age four upgrade. So it's always good to send that, especially when the base stats are so high. Um, and this little push here is actually really good for me. So look at the amount of idle reels he's got in this TC. He's got 32. Um, if he played this perfectly, or played this a bit better, he would have the walls up already, and he would just have 10 reels in the TC, and the other 22 um, gathering wood or coin or whatever for the age up time. Um, but as he doesn't have walls, and I've got enough tomahawks to one shot a veil, I think, he has to gas in all of them. Um, if he had walls then this wouldn't be a problem, but if he did he'd still have to put 10 wheels in the TC to stop me just killing the wall and just walking in. And if you consider those 10 idle wheels to kill my tomahawks, um, that would be let's say 42 wheels gathering. And that's like if he's done it perfectly. I have 44 wheels, so essentially I'm gathering with more wheels just because of this little tomahawk run by uh, I do lose my hero and some of these but I think it was worth it for like the Minutemen call and the 32 idle wheels for like one minute so I think that was good for me they're still not gathering and well yeah he's, he's just missed macro because of it and his age time is a bit delayed he's got five caravels he's getting armor plating he's sending improved warships already and he's just trying to break this but as you can see this is going to be very hard to break. I've got improved warships in now, two docks, and I've got two war huts. You might think this is a lot of wood invested, but I'm on his sea, right? And I've got mine secured, so if I hold this, I basically get in a really good position. And um, this place a little bit fast because this is a bit of a stalemate. Um, and there's a time. This, okay, here, this is what I want to talk about. So. At this point, it's been a stalemate for a solid minute or so. I think he must know I'm aging because I'm not pushing him. And I think he's aging because he's not pushing me. So what does this mean? He's going to be up in age 3 soon. And I need to be wary of a potential frigate being shipped on my side. So what does this mean? I need to throw up a war heart to get this extra defence. Luckily I have this uh, second dock ready. So for example if we ship the frigate here, cleaned up this dock, I still have this dock, but then again he could just avoid the war hut fire and go for this dock, but I could uh, spam canoes um, inside the dock like in reaction, in response, and of course he has a frigate that can't be repaired. 
and I can also potentially throw up docks underneath the war hut that's built. So if this dock goes down, I can just throw up a war hut underneath. Uh, sorry, another dock underneath and start spamming more canoes and just eventually kill this frigate because he can't repair it. Um, so I was just getting ready for that scenario. If that were to happen, which I think is highly likely, but um, he didn't go for it this game. But I just want to be prepared because that's like his window to um, get on my side of the sea. And if he does that, then I'm not going to be in a good position. Um, but in this scenario, with these two docks, with the train rate of canoes, I can respond quickly. And if I just had one dock and he just frigated the dock, he would have just cleaned my side and just rebuilt docks his side, this side as well. And then just taken me off the sea which is something I don't want. Um, so now I'm training Tomhawks in transition. He could potentially add some pikes in H2 and push with his warships and just try and get these war huts down. I should have queued these Tomhawks earlier, but um, it's fine. And he's got very carded warships and I'm just trying to pop canoes in and out, uh, focus caravels with my uh, war huts and docks. Well, they haven't got anything at the moment, but I'm just going to keep garrisoning these and poke at these for the meantime um, whilst training more canoes and getting wood upgrades. And this is another big, another mistake that I do. I end up deleting a privateer. I guess I'm just trying to gather crates and uh, do age ups and raid and stuff. But I mean, losing a privateer is quite a big deal, but I still have this position, so it's not the end of the world. It's just a bad trade for me. And you can even see it reflecting the scores a little bit. Like he's killed a couple of canoes and two privateers, and I've only killed like one caravel and a bunch of boats. But I do have this sea control, so this score gap will change in a bit. So with the age up crates, I use it to train some tomahawks. I use it to train some fishing boats, fishing upgrade. Uh, tomahawk upgrade and I use it to build a second TC as well because you got to remember even if I do have half the sea here and my entire sea he's still got three TC well he will have three TC's training bills um, so his land eco is just going to get ahead of yours anyway if you don't do anything about it and I think uh, this is like the perfect time to add a second TC He's adding his third, but you have like half the C, so and you've got your own C. Um, so this should be good for you. Um, and training two from two TCs whilst having like what 20 boats on your side is gonna be enough eco to compete, especially with two TP stagecoach as well. Now I put TPs on coin. I actually gather wood more efficiently than coin at this point, because I've got both wood upgrades. So I'm getting 0 0.7 from wood and 0 0.66 from coin. Um, so that's why I put TPs on coin. I want to age up as well. I'm going to use these uh, 1200 resource crates to age up. I use the age up crates to get the TC and some tomahawks. Um, I was trying to raid his wood line, but he, I think he shipped eight castors. Yeah, he shipped eight castors because he was afraid of a land push, I think. Um, I don't know why he shipped them, I think it was a bit of an overreaction, but um, I guess it stops me idling his entire eco with 16 tonners, so, which get two shotted by the TC, uh, three shotted by the TC, so, um, and he doesn't have CM, so it's three shot, uh, which is really efficient for me to be idling with. So, uh, what's my follow up? I'm going to go H4 with these uh, crates. They get long lines, it's a bit late, but it's better late than never. Um, as you can see, my fishing boats gather much less efficiently than his do, so he's getting uh, 1.17 food per second, and I'm getting 0 0.77 because he shipped a rendering plant, and I'm just getting my long lines now. My gather rate will go up a bit from this because it's 20%, but also got to remember I have much more boats. He has 14, I have 20, and well, if you take a look at this position, I'm just going to pause it a little bit. He, his sea control has like netted him only two whales. And you've got to remember, he's got one patch of fish here that has five food in it, 
and then the rest are kind of just exposed. So this, even this second whale is exposed from me poking. And then you, you can see all these fish patches. You can see uh, this whale. So I've got the third whale here. Uh, I've got these like five or six fishing patches. Um, and you can't gather these because it's under war hut fire and I can just pop canoes to poke at like fishing boats and then pop them back in. So I basically only has like this one safe whale and this one kind of, but I'm poking that as well. So basically his sea control is just slowly dwindling and he's slowly going to run out of food which means like his next hunt is just here and then once that runs out his next hunt is here which is very exposed and I can just send my tomahawks to this hunt in this wood line which I do at some point later um, and I add a second dock because I lost one of them and I want to keep this position as long as possible because the longer I hold it the more chances I have to win I'm training war canoes after I hit up. Uh, I'm building a fire pit to get the big boy back. And he's going on to this hunt now. And I think he gets hunting dogs at this point because he's just like, I need food. And I'm off the food on the water. And if you look at the veal count, the veal count is similar, but I'm also aging up with 10 veals. And he's investing all this wood into frigates and stuff whilst I'm just investing into war huts and boats basically um, and he kind of has to invest into warships because I've just got this position and I'm training forest prowlers but I feel like I should just cancel I think I cancel them because they don't they're not gonna do much and he's trying to gather fish here but I'm just gonna even a dock shooting and like a war canoe shooting is just gonna be enough to I all this entire fishing patch basically. Like, I'm just gonna two shot that boat basically, or three shot that boat. Um, in the meantime, I'm dancing, for, dancing for the big boy, aging up with ten vils and the travoy, and then I'm gonna go and I think I went to idle these, but he forced me back with the casadors. And yeah, I just pop these out. I'm just gonna kill some more boats, and I'm on seventy vils, training from two TCs, and then. I accidentally rallies in and then I see these organ guns. So these organ guns are really smart. Um, if he combines the organ guns onto these war huts and pushes with his naval army, my war canoes would three shot them I think because they do 50 siege ranged attack. Um, however if I'm focusing organs he's just going to nuke my canoes with the warships. And that's just going to obviously be a really good trade for him because these organs are only 400 res and then he's just going to kill a shit ton of war canoes which is not going to be good for me. But the trouble is he's doing this push like two minutes too late. I've already got the light cannons on the way. I'm going to probably have to sack one or two war huts. Uh, in the meantime I'm bringing my tomahawks back for my light cannons to pop in case he has any dragoons or huts or something. So he does this really strong push now. I'm gonna get a take. I'm gonna take a bit of a beating. Um, but I pop my canoes back out and pick off a caravel. Yep, I got one. And then the light cannons are gonna clean up the organs. And this is gonna be a very good trade for me. I've even got the res to ch train more light cannons. And light cannons are just gonna be really good because they're so cheap and they're so mobile, and you can just target buildings and warships and docks and everything you want with them so it's just really nice and uh, trying to rebuild a war hut that's a bit optimistic but he's using his broadsides on the light cannons instead of the canoes and these light cannons are cheap and I'm just picking off I'm just forcing the ship back and now I kind of want to just with these five light cannons on the way and upgrade for the light cannons and siege dance on the way and sorry sea dance and I've got my war chief on the way I kind of want to just avoid fighting for now <coughs> excuse me <coughs> I want to avoid fighting for now <coughs> and then once the sea dance comes in um, I'm gonna push back out with really strong boats that are just going to overpower his boats along with the light cannons along the shoreline. I've got five light cannons. I've got the fire pit earlier from earlier from reviving the war chief. And when Sea Dance comes in, I'm going to put like a whole bunch of vills on the fire pit. 
and then I'm going to try and take an engagement with the five light cannons and uh, sea dance siege, uh, sea dance canoes. You can see with the even with just seven bills on the pit. Um, okay, now it's fifteen. They've almost got two k HP and one hundred and fifty four attack. This has almost got one k HP and it's got uh, one hundred and fifty four attack as well. So they're going to be very, very strong in taking out these frigates, especially if some of them are so low HP from the building fire already. And I can take down these TCs with my uh, light cannons, and I'm just going to poke at boats whilst he's out of range. Um, oh, that broadside did a lot of damage, but luckily for Sea Dance, I only lost like half HP. <laughs> Normally it would have died if it didn't have Sea Dance, so that was good for me. And he's trying to train Coles in response, but my cannons are upgraded to H4, and they can dodge, and they're speedy, and I'm outmassing him, so one Kolb is not going to do it, uh, and he's not controlling it well because he's just busy with warships, and you can just see how fast this really carded frigate just gets nuked, and this is like the big turning point in the game, this is like my win condition, sea dance, um, and yeah, Casadors are going to be no problem, these bad boys one shot them, so. And I'm just going to rebuild War Huts behind this push. And this push is just going to do a lot of damage. These War uh, sorry, these War Canoes are, are going to be so strong. And it's best if I try and keep my War Chief by the coast, because as you can see, it buffs this canoe to 551, whilst this one only has 502. So. It's nice to have the war chief by the coast because he just buffs your naval ships as well. And I'm just taking good trades on the coals because I'm just out massing and I think I dodged one of the shots because like cannons are fast. And yep, yeah, I'm just nuking really overpowered frigates with even more stronger boats. My privateer's gonna go down, but he served his purpose and now I've just got like ten war canoes or eight war canoes. And I shipped sixteen tomahawks here instead of an upgrade. Or crates because I just don't want these light cannons to die to any like dragoons or hussars or anything like that. He's even got a stable, he's got three stables even. So I don't want him to like catch them with any hussars or dragoons. So I just want to have tomahawks covering them. Um, and in the meantime, I'm just going to pick off all these boats and I'm going to pick off these frigates. Um, and yeah, he's trying to go H4 to get like monitors and stuff out, but I mean, it's a bit too late. At this point in time, you just want to try and get as many coals as possible and get them on the shoreline and just try and pick off light cannons and or fishing boat uh, warships. But yeah, he's aging at the wrong time. He's trying to get frigates up and towers, but this is like a desperate move and Sea Dance is just so good in this scenario. It's just very strong along with... Uh, cannons so it's just I'm not entirely sure how ports holds this sort of push I think ports have to end the game before this scenario happens um, or just have more towers up and more coals out ready like he did misplay it a bit like the organ push was a bit was good but it was a bit too late um, but yeah he just did everything like two minutes later than when he should have done it basically um, so I just pick off low, low HP frigates, killing the docks, and this is where it's basically GG. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go to my perspective. So I just see these vills on this coin mine. He's not on whales, and he's still H3, so he's going to be running out of coins soon. I know this mine's probably out. He's probably on this mine and this mine, or this mine's out as well. Oh, not quite. So I just I see that mine, I'm just literally just rally the point over here and they're just going to AFK raid and yeah he's just going to be off coin, he's not going to be able to train calves and well he's got coin stacked but um, not for long basically meanwhile I've got infinite coin, I've got like 12 boats, I could even start booming on his side in fact I should have done that actually and I'm on 96 fills spamming from 2 TC's On I think I'm on fertility dance now uh, yeah, these aren't water dance anymore. I think I'm on fertility, so I'm just spamming bills now because the sea dance has done its job. And yeah, so this concludes my uh, Eero versus Port anti sea guide. As you can see, 
despite, I'm going to check the vill line first. So despite him having more vills and his vills gathering faster than mine because of the uh, idle villagers for the large portion of the game, his average idle villager count is probably around here, so around 16. And my average of vill is probably around, so it's mostly around here and a bit here, so I'm going to say it's about 8. So it's like an 8 vill disparity. And if you go to the the uh, the graph, there's not even like eight vills between these two values. And you gotta remember, I got stagecoach as well. And normally, if I just left C uncontested, his vill count would be going up like this, and max vills about here. But this scenario here would be me killing boats and idling vills and stuff, so he wasn't able to just the boom freely. Um, and if we go to all resources gathered, I actually have gather early game and then it just snowballs even more when the 1200 resource crates and then 10 vills comes in and I've just pushed them off the top C entirely. Um, so yeah, this was my anti C guide with Eero on two, two coastlines instead of just the one. Argu arguably it's much harder to play on two coastlines um, and Eero have great tools in doing so, so hopefully I can get a, a video with a Europe, European Civ, um, which is, I think, is much harder to pull off than a Civ like Eero or India or Aztec, for example. Um, but yeah, that concludes the game, that concludes the video. Thank you so much for watching, and peace.